sanctification is the key to our deliverance. And he brought me to 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. And I, I'm going to be obedient to the Holy Ghost this morning and really try to get into the understanding of sanctification. And as you're turning to the scripture, 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, sanctification, the generic meaning of sanctification is the state of proper functioning. To sanctify someone or something is to set that person or thing apart for the use intended by the designer. A pen is sanctified when used to write. Eyeglasses are sanctified when used to improve sight. In the theological sense, things are sanctified when they are used for the purpose God intends. A human being is sanctified, therefore, when he or she lives according to God's design and purpose. The Greek word translated sanctification means holiness. To sanctify, therefore, means to make holy. In one sense, only God is holy. God is separate, distinct. No human being or thing shares the holiness of God's essential nature. There is one God. Yet scripture speaks about holy things. Moreover, God calls human beings to be holy as he is holy. Another word for a holy person is a saint. And I began to look at this, and I know God's been dealing with me on salvation, on baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I wondered why he waited for sanctification. I kind of knew it was coming because you can't have one without the other. You can't just be saved and not be sanctified. And you can't be sanctified without the baptism of the Holy Ghost. These are the three works of grace. But sanctification is unique. Sanctification is set apart in a way that it's a definite work or progress in our spiritual walk, but it's also continual. Mm -hmm. It's also progressive. Amen. So Paul began to look at this in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. He says, therefore, right. seeing we have this ministry, mm -hmm. as we have received mercy... We faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor uh -oh, handling the word of God deceitfully. People are touching God's word deceitfully Amen. Amen. using in your windows mm -hmm. trying to twist one verse mm -hmm. to give you a prosperity gospel Amen. Amen. they're trying to use the scriptures mm -hmm. to justify homosexuality Amen. in sanctification I have to clean up my sex life My mind has to be washed. Sanctification helps me clean up my marriage. It helps me clean up my children. It sanctifies me pure where I can deal with people on the job. Deal with people in the community. I can get a better understanding how the church should work. Amen. How the order should be placed. This is why there's confusion in the world. Because from church to church, there's different things being taught. 
God is not the author of confusion. This tells me if there's confusion in these churches, that means the devil's been there for a long time. And if you don't think the devil will come up in the church, you're sorrowfully mistaken. Even while Jesus was preaching the gospel, the devil came right up and sat in the pew. Sanctification is a renouncing of dishonesty. Because the first person you are dishonest with is yourself. The Bible says let no man think of himself more highly than he ought. And there are people with Pentecostal egos. We're going to get to that. And we're talking about sanctification. And we have to understand, we have to be sanctified from ourself. Our biggest stumbling block is our own mindset. Our own heart set. We'll get to that. Peter tells us, he says, that we need to add to our faith virtue. And to virtue, knowledge. And to knowledge, temperance. Mm -hmm. And to temperance, patience. And to patience, godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, love. You see the progression? For if these things be in you and abound, that they make you, that ye shall neither be barren, nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. I had a man clearly come up to me and says, where'd you get your theologian degree? I said, I got it from the Holy Ghost. He said, what? He said, what are you talking about? You sound well learned. I said, all I can tell you is that the Spirit of God teaches all men. And if you're willing to study, if you're willing to get inside the scriptures, if you're willing to sit down with the old prophets and listen to their dark sayings, the Holy Ghost will show you Jesus Christ. The Spirit of God teaches all men. And if the Spirit of God is teaching people, that means they all need to be saying the same thing. He says, but he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sin. Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. People are falling because they're trying to appease people. And I shared this not too long ago. God's dealing heavy in my spirit for some reason that he says, you need to be a Micaiah. Uh That's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. You need to be a Micaiah. Uh You need to tell the truth to whomever, wherever, about whatever. I said, Micaiah, wait a second. Wait a second, God. Wait. Let me go study. <laughs> when we first met Micaiah, he was in a dungeon. He was thrown in there because they hated him. You know, God. You know, one of the greatest hatreds on the planet is of God's anointing. People hate you. Because of the anointing in your life. You could be the finest brother, the most beautiful sister, 
trying to keep yourself, trying to walk upright, trying to talk upright, deal with people with respect, and they got to find something to hate you with. They watch Daniel for days, weeks, and months, and they couldn't find a fault. But in his God, sanctification will put a bullseye on your chest. Verse 3 says, but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. The reason why people are in sin is because they want to be. The reason why our family is in sin is because they want to be. Everybody loves God. That's great. That's wonderful. But when I mention Jesus, well, uh, I'm sorry, we can't talk about religion on the job. And you know, my God, I tried to do right by my mama. I said, let me tell you something. No man will tell me not to talk about my Savior. I'm not, I'm not well liked in a lot of places I go. I, 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 got a, I got a smart mouth, oh God. I, 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 I got a tongue, 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 I I said, well, uh, well, well, wait a minute. If you don't like religion, then what are all these people dressed up for Halloween for? <laughs> well, what you talking about? Well, if you want to get some education, I can educate you, yeah. right? Because Halloween is a Druidic and a Celtic religion yeah. where they worship trees and herbs and demonic forces. And one time a year, they allow demons and spirits to come up to play a trick or treat. Yeah. I know more than just the Bible. I study. I've been taught by the elders to study the world. So that's what I do. I study all the world wars and how many of these leaders, even today, turn to witchcraft to divine what the other countries are doing. That, 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 that confuses me because when I study scripture and I begin to sanctify myself, my eyes begin to see a little bit better. And I remember Jesus said something. He said, if Satan cast out Satan, how can this kingdom stand? So that means with all these people turning to these demons, yeah. these demons are tricking everybody. Don't you be fooled by the color of the skin of your next president or your next governor or your next mayoral candidate. You better study people narrowly. And pray. God, show me people as they are. Because we love to, you know, quote people's names, and some people are good at name attention, some people ain't. I'm more interested in understanding what you are. What are you? People study me so I can study you. Paul said, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men 
who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest to them. For God has showed it unto them for the invisible things. Did you hear what he said? The invisible things of him from the creation of the world, right, are clearly seen. Right? We understand that Jesus is the God of not only the visible, but the invisible. And over time, he's given men knowledge to peek into the invisible. This is why now you have infrared technology. This is why you have night vision technology. This is why you have heat coming to the building because you can't see it, but you know you can feel it. This is why there's many volts running through this wall, but if I touch the wall, it don't kill me because God gave men knowledge of insulation. You have to understand, we weren't even intelligent enough to close ourselves right. I gotta sanctify, sanctify, sanctify myself. The invisible things that are made, even his eternal power of God, of his God, so that they are what? Without excuse. There is no excuse for not accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Amen. And you know, some people don't have a problem with Savior because people want to be saved all the time. Right? Right? The service industry is replete with people saving people. Out of hurricanes and floods and flat tires, they get good money. AAA makes some good money. But to be Lord, well, now that's a problem because ain't nobody going to tell me what to do. You know, they... You get the, you get the, Amen. right? Amen. That's okay. But you're stiff-necked. You're unrepentant. You, you bend your back all the way to God. Did you know resisting the Holy Ghost is a curse? It's a curse. And you wonder why things happen. Because somewhere I was resistant. Another point, he, Jesus says, he says, he says something very profound. He says, whereunto then shall I liken men of this generation? This is interesting. He says, what are they like? They are like unto children sitting in the marketplace, calling one to another and saying, we have piped unto you, right? And you have not danced. We have mourned to you, and you have not wept. L l l see, it gets beyond, you know, just uh, Pentecostalism mm -hmm. and, and, and being Baptist and being Catholic and being, you know, Presbyterian and Episcopalian. Wow. You know, now I sound like a doctor. Now I sound like, I'm, you know, I got something. He said, for John the Baptist came neither, eating or drinking. And you said he was full of the devil. Okay. Jesus tried another tactic. I have come eating and drinking. Since, since fasting and praying was a problem for you, I'll come eating and drinking. Matter of fact, matter of fact, matter of fact, I'll hang out with you. Right? Now that didn't satisfy you because now I'm a glutter. So in other words, the world really don't care how the gospel come. They just don't want it. God is trying to appease people. Trying to get to where they are. Short of going across his standards. And people still ain't satisfied. People are mad now because it's cold. They'll be mad in December and January because it's snow. They'll be mad in spring because they got to rake leaves. They'll be mad in the summer because it's hot. My God! Never satisfied. Children of the devil.
Verse 4 says, in whom the God of this world, you know who the God of this world is? Amen. Satan. Amen. Hath blinded what? The minds of them which believe not. Lest, unless the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not of ourselves, but Christ Jesus, Christ Jesus, the anointed Jesus, the Lord. And I said I was a servant, right? Yeah. You know, you got you to double check me because sometimes, make sure I'm in scripture. <laughs> What's he say? And ourselves, what? Your servants right. for Jesus' sake. Amen. 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 That's why I said ministry, I, I'm going to say something. Pastor, and I'm going to get, you know, they're going to they talk about me later. That's why ministry, okay, is not a glorified position. Right? But there's glory in it. Ministry is not about the role. The robe is sanctified to cover my body. Just in case I twist at a weird angle and you know. There's a reason why the dancers wear their long gowns, cause if the sister, you know, just This is why I gotta button up, cause if 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 the sister kind of like a. Oh. <laughs> Even the brothers, you need to put them gold chains. We stop it. Uh-huh. Up there doing like 10, 20 push-ups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm swole. Oh yeah. In the church, we have to sanctify. Sanctify. We, we, I gotta, I gotta rethink. I, I, I gotta readjust. I gotta reset. I gotta rehome. In the manufacturing industry, when a machine loses its way, it go, it goes places you don't expect it to go. And the engineer has to come in and rehome, rehome the machine. It's called the machine zero. We are like that daily. I have to rehome with the Spirit of God. I, I got to reset. Because throughout the day, you're picking up things. Did you know you can pick something up by someone handing you a piece of paper? And you think nothing of it, go to sleep. And all of a sudden, you're literally, God has shown you something about the document. He'll show you what the document's really all about. Amen. Why it was written. Who wrote it. What was the intent. What's the purpose? Did you know God will allow you to see an email no one intends you to see? Oh, 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 oh. Can you please delete that? Let me tell y'all, for those who are in the corporate world, save all of your emails. Did you hear what I just said? It's got to get quiet. Save all of your emails. I don't care if you're a lawyer, a doctor, an engineer, a mechanic, a seamstress. Save all of the evidence off of the computer. Because people will hunt you down. Yeah. And, and, you know, they'll, they'll conveniently, you know, think that you were the one behind. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. You mean this one? Oh, oh. <laughs> you only look out. Do not 
be deceived of the devil's devices. He is cunning. When you're sanctified, when you allow your mindset to focus on Christ, you, you won't understand why you're in prayer. Lord, why am I thinking about my computer on the job? Pay attention. Lord, why am I thinking about lifting weights? I'm trying to keep my mind on you. Pay attention. Because there are times, did you know there are times God will tell you, will you please stop praying? Will you please stop praying and do something? I already answered your prayer. Now get up and do it. If we are a church that's on the move, then move. If you are a church on the move, then move. If you're struggling with the outreach ministry, go out. Because man didn't call you, God did. Because if you're really called of God, even a demon will recognize it. And then you know a demon will affirm it? Wow. My God. Sanctification is the key to our deliverance. We don't preach of ourselves. It's, sanctification is the purging, purging of filthiness from the spirit and the flesh. Some people don't have a filthiness that can be seen on the outside, but their spirit is filthy. Sanctification is a progressive work, meaning that it is continual. The closer I want to come to God, the more sanctifying is required of me. This is why if you really want to do something for God, you're, the things that were okay to do last week, God will say, uh, uh I need you to put that away now. Amen. Because everything that is expedient is not, or the lawful is not always expedient. Amen. Did you know that God will, will he'll, he'll actually put a requirement on you that seems ridiculous? Do you know why? It's for your anointing. Yes. It's for your anointing. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This is why the people of God are peculiar. Mm -hmm. We're peculiar like that. Yes. You know, I'm sorry. I really, I'm, you know, I, you know, I, I'm sorry, but I would love to have my child come to the birthday party, but I got to stay. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know, it kind of feels strange, and the parents kind of look at you and like, you know, but that's okay, because they're not your judge. Amen. There's a reason why I'm staying here while my child is having a good time, because in my child's innocence, I'm lurking. I know y'all saw the Terminator. the Terminator. When the Terminator was on the target, he would, he would scan, right? We need to do more scanning. You need, to, you need to scan your, your children's teachers. Because I'm looking to see if that brother's a little bit, a little bit too effeminate. And I'm looking to see if that sister's a little bit too bullish. <laughs> I'm looking. I'm not judging. I'm looking. When I go to the hospitals and rehab centers and they tell me people are stealing from them, I listen. I don't say nothing. I listen. You know who I talk to? I talk to Jesus. Jesus. Something came across my ears. Lord, confirm what is going on. You better, you better, you better ask God about some things and be plain about it. If you're serious about your salvation, be serious about it. Because I can't be playing around with people. I don't care if they're a young baby or an older. I can't be playing with my salvation. The hearts of people are desperately wicked today. People are sly and slick and sneaky and filthy and evil. They'll do something. They'll cut you a piece of cake. My God. And they're poison you're putting next week. You know, I had 
this week, you know, my job, what they like to do, I don't know why, but, you know, they like to order a lot of food. You know, and, you know, it's healthy food, salads, stuff like that. I'm like, okay, that's, that's wonderful. I came into a meeting kind of late because I was busy, right? And then they ended up canceling it early. They said, oh, we got all this food. Hey, Dudley, send it to me. Hey, Dudley, why don't you, uh, you know, why don't you pack up some of the food and take it home to your family? I said, oh, huh, huh. That's a nice offer, isn't it? That's nice. Thinking about my family. I'm looking at the man, he's kind of fidgety. See, 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 sanctification makes people uncomfortable. You don't have to act a certain way. You be how God made you. But the Holy Ghost bears witness. You know, you know where I get that from? Because when they came to search for Jesus many times, they couldn't tell him from everybody else. You know, we, we, we want to be, you know, we want to be gospel fabulous now. We got to have bling. Everybody's got to see me when Jesus didn't do that. The Bible says he made of himself no reputation. We want everybody to know me. I want every minister to know me. You better have few friends. Amen. You better keep your circle, circle small. Amen. Let me tell you about sanctification. With sanctification, we're supposed to learn servitude. Even to those who with spite use us. David had to be sanctified of the lust for power. Samson had to be sanctified of the lust for women and disobedience. Now, I'm going to hit you with something. Y'all ain't going to like me now. Joshua had to be sanctified from jealousy. Because uh -huh. uh -huh. in the Old Testament, there were some elders who the Holy Ghost fell on him. And you know what he told Moses? Hey, Moses, old buddy, old pal, won't you go rebuke them? You know why? Because Joshua had a mindset, right? It's only us two and none of you. Some people had that mindset in the church. It's only us. It's only this ilk. It's only this, this connection, this family, this friendship. It's only us. When God tells me that I have given my love to everybody. If it wasn't an issue, it wouldn't be in the scriptures. Did you know Sarah had to be sanctified from lying in her spirit? Yeah. Amen. Paul and Barnabas, that's right, mm -hmm. had to be sanctified from discord. Yeah. Did you know they had an argument so bad it threatened the ministry? Yeah. Right. Did you know people are fighting the church so bad it threatens the ministry? Yeah. And people wonder why the church ain't growing because people got discord yeah. everywhere. And God has already been telling you in dreams and visions, get it, get it, get it right. Did you know Onesimus had to be sanctified from stealing? And then Philemon had to be sanctified from grudging? That's right. The elders of the gospel had to be sanctified. Building up churches. Casting out demons, sanctify yourself. Singing in the choir, preaching the pulpit, sanctify yourself. Joel said that all the priests, all the ministers, get on the altar and cry for the people. This is not American Idol. We're not trying to compete with people's anointings. What kind of foolishness is in the churches? I can't be used like nobody else. That means I'm counterfeit. I can only be used how God put it in me to be used. And God knows which ones of his vessels. Oh, yeah, I need you today. Now, 
Nathaniel had to be, uh oh, sanctified from prejudging people. Uh huh. Job had to be sanctified of self righteousness. Ain't nothing wrong with me. Ain't I ain't got no sin. When the Bible tells me all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, it's in the scriptures. It's in the Bible. If you're mad with me, pray tonight and see if that man was lying. What does that mean, lying? Is he of you or of the devil? Get it, get it, get it right. So we know who's playing church and who ain't. Well, Lord, I can't do that. That's, that's my mama, you know. I know some mamas and fathers who give up their children. You don't believe me? You go to St. John 9th chapter and talk to the blind man. See what his mama and daddy did. See what his mother and father did. Huh? They were more concerned about their connection to the church than the fact that their son was delivered. Oh, God. Oh, Lord. Did you know even though he had no sin, Jesus even sanctified himself? As an example? Verse 6 says, For God who commended the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. You don't worship people. You better stop worshiping people. Stop worshiping people. Curse is the man who trusts in the arm of flesh. You can love people, I'm telling you. You can respect people. As a matter of fact, the Bible says respect. Even told Timothy, respect the elders. Right? But he also, on the flip side, told Timothy how to deal with them too. You read First and Second Timothy, you see exactly what I'm talking about. You read Titus. You know Titus was a fighter? Because he was different from Timothy. Amen. Titus was a little bit older in age. That's right. You know, I know as people get older in age, they get a little bit more indignant. <laughs> Paul, if you, if you listen to what Paul said, Paul says... For this cause, for this reason, I left you in Crete, that you may contend for the gospel. That's what he says. It's amazing, you know, the, the, the language pattern out of the scriptures is a certain thing. You know, it, it, when, when you study and go into the background, you say, wow, that's interesting. He was a fighter for the gospel. In other words, Paul put him there because he knew he didn't take no mess. Amen. Amen. Some would rather reduce the word of God to some words collected together by men over centuries to be used as philosophical viewpoints. That's what they want to reduce the word of God to. I know exactly what I'm talking about. But scripture tells me that the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and it is a discerner of the thoughts, right? And intents of the heart. Let's get one thing straight. All scripture, we're talking about the word of God, is given by inspiration of God. No man or woman came up with it. It is profitable for doctrine, for teaching, for reproof, correction, 
for correction, for the instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Sanctification will cause you to seek God and to search out the matter. You'll need sanctification when God doesn't give you an answer that goes your way. Not every question is yay, yay. Sometimes it's no. Because some people, you know, some people pray against people. Lord, why don't you move them out the way? No. Lord, why don't you cast them down? No. You don't trust me? Go talk to Balaam. Have a conversation with him. Have a conversation. Have a little sit down. Have a little chit chat. See, the reason why the Spirit of God has it nice and quiet in here, because we have to teach this thing. Because some people took the course, but they didn't graduate. They dropped out. They got partial credit. You don't hear too many people speaking of sound doctrine where we're going back to the altar. And we are tarrying for the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 Where people are coming forth of themselves saying, I have received Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. Did you know, and I saw it, I observed. Not only was I looking at them cockroaches, I was observing. <laughs> right? The pastor tried to hook me up. He said, watch yourself behind you, bro. I said, oh, yeah, I see him. <laughs> It was a teaching moment for many people there. See, sound doctrine has to get you down in a quiet place. See, the Bible says my father and I will come in and sup with you. This is why Mary found herself at Jesus' feet, even though she was being ridiculed by her own family, her own sister, because I had to learn. I have, to, I have to hear what Jesus is telling me. There's so much confusion. There's so much noise. Even the scientists say, hey, turn down the game. I, I got to get the, the background noise. Sometimes when we used to have that tower, you would pick up some background noise. That's confusion. We call it white noise. Like when your TV goes on the blink, that's white noise. You need to get past all that. You need to get your antenna higher. You know why we put our antenna higher, right? So you can get above all the obstructions. There's too many obstructions in our lives. And we're not sanctifying ourselves appropriately. We're not using the right full of soap. The type of soap we're using is losing its strength halfway through the wash. We got to sanctify ourselves. Look at ourselves. Sometimes God will not give you the answer you want. Paul recounted how three times he prayed to God. This man was doing wonderful things. We don't doubt that. Praying, this thing bothered him. Whatever this issue was, it was an issue. A thorn in his flesh. He prayed to God, Jesus, 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 Jesus. God says, my grace is sufficient. A lot of us get attitudes. Because I know God's got to deliver me. Did you know why he had that? He had to confess. Did you know? When you read, my God, when you read the scriptures, as powerful as this man was, as anointed as he was, he had to confess his fault to the church. We got away from that. We got away from that. Confessing yourself. He says the reason why this came to me because, you know, <laughs> I have a tendency to brag. You don't believe me? You read it. He would brag. Because some people, when they're anointed, they think it's of themselves. It goes to their head. If any man desires the office of a bishop, let him not be a novice. That he may fall in the snare of the devil. 
my grace is sufficient for thee. So he says, uh, one thing you need to learn about sanctification is that it's a necessary purifier for the saint of God. Amen. Sanctification helps to keep our heart with all diligence, Amen. for out of it are the issues of life. Amen. Jesus says, for out of our heart proceeds evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. Sanctification helps you temper these things through prayer and fasting and consecration. So that when God shows you people's true character and how they talk about you in the back of the church and how they pray against you in the bathroom, you don't allow Satan to get inside your mind. You let the Holy Ghost take the anger away so that it doesn't turn you into hatred and grudging. But remember that God revealed these things for a reason. This is so that your discernment can be built up to where God can use you completely and entirely. Nehemiah would have been killed dead if he didn't perceive that Shemaiah had been paid off by his enemies to prophesy against him. And that God didn't send this man. You know what this man says? Hey, brother, uh, how about you and I go down to the church, to the temple, and we can talk about this thing. He says, I perceive no, no, no. that you are not of God. See, we got too politically correct in the church. We don't like to offend people no more. Uh huh. I know, I know, I know. It's gonna, yeah, y'all don't want me back for a long, long time. Jesus says, I have come to bring a sword. And you know exactly how y'all feel when people play with your money? Huh? Yeah? Yeah? What about your food? We'll see a little bit later how people. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. In ministry now, verse 8, we are troubled on every side. Yet we're not distressed. Amen. We are perplexed. There are times, God, I don't, I don't, I don't understand. But we're not in despair. We're persecuted. But we're not forsaken. No matter how much people persecute you and run your name through the mud and do wicked things against you, God is right there by your side. He said, I'll neither leave you nor forsake you. All I need you to do is sanctify yourself. Sanctify yourself. Because while you're being sanctified, right, the devil's in your ear. Now, what you doing down there? What you, what, what you think? You think you better than everybody else? What's going on? You know how she cut her eyes at you. You know what he was saying about you. Matter of fact, I think he's looking at your wife right now. And you sitting here, you don't think that happens? You don't think that happens. It's a spiritual battle on the altar. That's why we need prayer warriors on the altar. How do I know that's true? Because when Daniel was praying, Gabriel was trying to give him an answer, the enemy came to fight, and the angels had to back up Gabriel. Because the spiritual revelation was just that important. Some of you need a divine relation from God and not have nobody get involved in it. Why would God need to do that? The prayer warriors will pray with you. But you need to hear God for yourself. You need your own relationship. You need to know God is talking to you. You need to be able to discern these things. These are the ways of the church. This is the gospel. And we have turned our back on righteousness. So why now are we mad at God? 
when we have metal detectors in all our high schools, when seven-year-old children are killed with automatic assault rifles, why does it surprise us as a nation when you curse God to his face? And now you're mad at me for standing on holiness. When God dealt with me, he said, they're going to slap you in your mouth. They're going to spit on you. Did you know God will show you what you have to suffer? For the gospel's sake? I don't see about things much. Because sometimes it's overwhelming for the ministers. And all I can turn to, lead me to the rock that's higher than I. Praise God. This is Pastor Watkins from Community Revival and Outreach Ministries. I trust that you enjoyed that wonderful service we just uh, had, and I trust the Lord that it touched your heart and your spirit, and it also inspired your soul. But beyond just listening to a message, we also ask you to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And how you do that, you just simply ask and bow before Christ. And if you're willing to lay hands upon your TV or bow your heads right where you are or sitting, if you just bow your head with me and we'll pray the prayer of faith. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for all things in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ that you forgive us of all our sins and have mercy upon our soul. And that not only you save us, O Lord, from our sins, but, O Lord, that you would sanctify our hearts and sanctify our souls as well as, O Lord, baptize us with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. We accept you, O Lord, into our hearts and our life. We confess our sins and we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that God raised him from the dead. And by believing and accepting this, O Lord, we claim to be saved in his holy name. We give thanks and praise for all things. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I trust the Lord that your heart is fixed with the Lord and that your blessing will be assured and that you'll come out and fellowship with us. And if not with us, your, your own local church in your area and that God will be a blessing to you until we see you again. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.